Hello and welcome back to Factorio Tightening the Belt Mega Base Guide. I'm Exterminator and thank you for joining me again. So last time we got nuclear set up and I hope you guys uh, understood the concepts I went over there. I have not had a chance to read through the comments yet. Uh, like I said, I'm a pretty under the weather and <laughs> pretty much using all my energy for the day to do a recording here. But uh, I do want to do something a little bit different and fun this episode. Uh, we have, I researched off camera Power Armor Mark II, we have the speed modules and I'm currently building up the efficiency modules to make it and I'd like to uh, show you guys the uh, the true power of these personal laser defenses and we can go clear clear some stuff out, do something a little bit different. I, uh, <laughs> I had to restrain myself there from just doing a full on Star Wars quote but uh, anyway so we come down here and we have two three we need two more and it looks like yeah red circuits as i suspected are the bottleneck here um the one issue with doing it like i like i am here where, where the red circuits come after these guys get it is that it it kind of creates like a big discrepancy because these aren't actually getting fed um until uh until after these do so i think i'm just going to manually feed a little bit in here it's very close we just need a bit more. This one only needs one more, and this one needs one more as well. And then those will crank away, and guess what we need? And I'm actually going to throw some uh, speed modules in here just to speed it up a little bit. Um, I did take a couple speed module 3s, and I threw them in uh, these guys here. And then also we were running low on fuel cells, so I went ahead and handcrafted a couple more. We obviously will automate that, but just for now, uh, I made a few more by hand to get that moving. And hopefully he... Oh, you little punk. You stole it. All right, there we go. So let's get the rest of the stuff we need. Uh, we need uh, blue circuits and we need steel. Uh, and then we need some, I think some more blue circuits for the uh, the laser defenses. And of course the uh, fusion reactors. We're actually gonna need quite a lot for the fusion reactors. So let's just go ahead and pick up like everything, <laughs> all the things. Uh, so let's make another fusion reactor. Uh, two may be enough, in fact, I'm gonna, we should really get, that. that's what we should get. We need the Mark II batteries, if I can find them in here somewhere. Here we go. Get that researching, that should chug along pretty quick. And then laser defenses, uh, we will make a couple more of these. And to my knowledge, the, these are not affected by laser, def, uh, laser upgrades, like laser research. Uh, they weren't last time I talked to a dev about it. It may have been changed, but I, I think this is just the base damage. Um, I don't think that damage is increased off of the research we've done, uh, but could be wrong. Okay, so we're going to grab this. And that's all the efficiencies we're really ever going to want. So for now, um, yeah, I really don't want that doing that. Um, <laughs> for now, I think we're going to change this to productivities. Uh, I am going to actually build like a whole productivity and speed module build and such. But for now, uh, we're just going to switch this back and forth because I want to go, I want to go destroy some biters. All right, so I'm just gonna dump this extra stuff in this chest uh, because we really don't need it. And then these guys are already making one. Uh, he can make an extra one, I guess. Uh, okay, so you are going to be at level three and I'm just gonna dump those extra. And we should be able to make our power armor now. Uh, we are short on the speeds, which is fine. I will go ahead and grab half of those and we'll make our armor. Fantastic. So these are going to require quite a few of these batteries. Uh, those Mark II batteries. And once this guy's finished... Alright, then we will change him over to Productivity 3. And we're just going to throw those extra in there. And we have the blue circuits, which is awesome. We could almost make another reactor if we want to. Uh, let's actually go... Let's go pick up... Is there, is there a reason that... Oh. Whoops, <laughs> I, uh, I, did the, I did the wrong one. Okay, those are level ones. They, they're not supposed to be level threes way up there. Uh, so let's go get some laser defenses so we can make a few more. If we try to calculate this out, uh, these guys take 600 kilowatts. I assume that's like every time they fire, I would imagine. Uh, and then, so okay, so let's empty this out. And then we're going to take our Power Armor Mark II, and you can see the vast difference here in size. So dump those in there, put exoskeleton in, 
uh, these batteries, I would, okay, so this is two, 20 megawatts and this is 100 mega, or sorry, 20 megajoules and this is 100 megajoules. So really, what I have here is equivalent to one of these. It's just more space efficient to do this. But for now, we'll throw these in here. And then laser defenses as well. Uh, we could throw like over here. I'll throw these in here just for the heck of it. Uh, okay, so these take 600. Each one of these does 750. Uh, we have some batteries though. I'd really like a few more laser defenses and even probably another fusion reactor. I mean, we're kind of scooping up our blue circuits here, but you know, they'll replenish. And I may want three fusion reactors for some builds, and it's probably not a bad idea just to have an extra one. Uh, and then let's uh, let's dump this one in there. I had another laser defense. There we go. So four, and then another fusion reactor, and we could actually fit. We could fit even more. We could fit four more in here. Uh, I think that's probably a bit excessive. I am going to go ahead and grab some batteries and just make a few more batteries like on the run. Uh, probably another, actually, can we fit an exoskeleton in here? We actually could. Another one may not be a bad idea. Uh, but yeah, so I want to, I want to show you guys, like, if you're having problems with uh, combat and stuff, even once you get, you know, once you get Power Mark 2, it should not be a problem any longer whatsoever. Uh, because what I'm hoping to demonstrate, of course, there's the possibility I could just <laughs> entirely mess this up and uh, it would be extremely embarrassing. Uh, but what I'm hoping is that uh, what I'm hoping is that uh, I can demonstrate literally just running through a biter base with this and just destroying it. So there's like a lot up here we should probably get rid of. Same with over here. In fact, we were getting some attacks. So let's run. I think actually the car is probably still faster at this point. So let's go ahead and grab the car. And I'll throw these batteries in here while I can. Uh, let me dump those. I kind of do want another laser defense, to be honest. I mean, this is just like a totally hacked together thing. If we if we did some real calculations with the batteries and all that, we could probably figure out like exactly how much of each, you know, laser defenses we need and, you know, power for that. But uh, this should do for now. So let's drive over here, get somewhat close to these. And, uh, and yeah, so if you, these laser defenses are just super good because they shoot fast, they do a lot of damage, and again, they do laser damage, which is going to, uh, you know, get past the physical resistance that, that a lot of these bigger biters have. Uh, and then, uh, actually though, on top of it, I'm actually mistaken on how I want to do this. We actually do not quite want this. Um, I have to take these out because we actually need... Need at least a couple shields. That's what I forgot. <laughs> we need some shields. Let's get uh, let's get these Mark II shields as well. Uh, I don't think we'll be able to make any. Maybe we can. I'll have to see. But uh, this only works with shields, of course. I mean, the Power Armor II is pretty beefy, but you know, if you're running through there with worms and stuff, you are going to take quite a bit of damage. And we may still end up dying. I could exchange an exoskeleton for shields, but uh, we'll we'll have to see here. So, how much does this cost? 10 and 10 of those, yeah, see, it's pretty ridiculous. All right, so we have all this, we're good to go. Uh, let's save just in case, because <laughs> who knows? Uh, so theoretically, I'm gonna kind of scout here. There's no worms here. So this should be one where I can literally just walk through it and they just die. As you can see. <laughs> it's like, it's that easy. I mean, once you get bigger bases with big worms and behemoth biters, it's not that easy. But it's still like, I mean, it's this, this, <laughs> you're just a ball of death, which I find, this is actually my favorite way to kill biters. I actually find this the most entertaining. I hope you guys find it as entertaining as I do. It's, uh, it's just like, you don't even have to do anything. You just have your, your hand on your WASD keys and just walk. And it's <laughs> insanely powerful. All right. Energy shields are done. Okay. What else is in the pollution? Uh, this over here, kind of. So, you know, uh, I, I hope you guys don't mind a little break from building. Uh, I'm not super with it, with not feeling well, so <laughs> any builds I do may be pretty iffy, and I figured showing this off at least once would... Hey, they're, like, retaliating already. That's it. Uh, showing this off, like, at least once would be uh, pretty good. 
So, you know, really, you can do this with a Power Armor Mark 1, it's just not nearly as effective because, you know, you can only fit like one fusion reactor and a couple lasers in there. Uh, this one, however, is just super good. And I actually can't see anything. I forgot my night vision. We should probably put our night vision in there somewhere, huh? Uh, I don't really want to take out anything. Although I know you guys probably can't see, so let's let's put that on. Actually, I have grenades, don't I? There we go. So we're taking some damage, but like with three fusion reactors and stuff, these uh, shields just recharge so quick. Now these Mark II shields are kind of like the batteries and the fact that they're more space saving. Because, you know, this is 150 hit points, whereas this is 50, but this requires 10 of the previous, so it's it's nowhere near like a one-to-one -one conversion. It's just for space efficiency, essentially. So you could, you know, you could change this up however you want. You know, maybe get rid of, if you're feeling really confident, get rid of the shields and put in another EXO or something. Uh, but I think at least a couple shields would be good. Uh, you could get rid of two laser defenses. Uh, put in some exoskeletons or even get away with two reactors like it depends how you want to set your build up if you because if you only have two reactors and you put like mark two batteries in here so like two or three or four mark two batteries and let them charge up first that's a ton of stored energy so you probably don't need the third reactor and then you could just put you know whatever more shields another exo even more lasers in the place because uh, when, when you're when your fusion reactors are no longer able to uh, supply, you know, en enough power for your stuff, then then the, the batteries will take over and it will pull the energy from the batteries. So let's go ahead and drive up to those other bases. Uh, Research-wise, I mean, that's... I think I got mostly all the stuff. We could get this. That's pretty expensive. Uh, a Mark II Roboport wouldn't hurt. Blue Belt. Another stack size bonus would actually probably be good. Oh dear. Always, always with the force, man. I wish I could have these things target the trees. That would be really nice. <laughs> Probably could use some more labs even. I mean, this is going fairly quick, I guess. I'm not, I'm not in a, in a rush at all. I'm, I'm in that stage where I've mentioned before where, you know, I'm like, my research is way past what I'm actually, what I've actually built. Although, really, we've built all the sciences. I mean, at this stage, it, it's it's mostly, like, modules and just expanding the builds and then, like, heading towards towards rockets. So we can get some space science and, uh, and all that stuff. Ouch. Uh, so, like, for a rocket, I mean, that's a fairly large endeavor. We, we haven't actually researched the rocket. I suppose that's something we may want to head towards uh, research-wise. Uh, okay, so these bases over here, this will be a little bit better of a test. Now, we could stay in the car. You you can do this from a vehicle, so, like, uh, we don't actually have tanks, but doing this from a tank is actually insanely good. Uh, probably better than just running because, you know, the tank has a huge amount of durability, way more than these shields I have. In fact, this could actually get a little bit iffy. <laughs> uh, can, we, can we get a tank really, really quick? How, how close... Uh, yeah, so doing this from a tank is just really, really good. I'm going to save again. I know it's a little cheaty. But, I mean, I know I leave my body, but like running out here again is just going to be a huge pain. Uh, so we want to, I mean, you need to be like a little strategic, like not get surrounded. You can see how I'm kind of skirting around the biters um, rather than just running straight in and getting surrounded. Because if you get surrounded, then you're in real trouble. It's, uh, you know, that's when you have some issues. But even this which is certainly more challenging. I mean, it hardly brought my shields down. It just murdered everything. <laughs> it's so fun. I'm telling you, man, it's like, if you haven't done this, you should definitely try it. It's, uh, I would say it's definitely the best uh, biter clearing uh, tactic you can do before, uh, before you get artillery. I mean, really, arguably, it could be equal to artillery depending on how you do it. Because the artillery, like, the one thing I've noticed about artillery, it's it's really cool, and, it, and don't get me wrong, it's good, but it doesn't really have much AoE, to be honest. So, you know, it'll, like, shoot a shell, maybe it would kill these three bases, but if they're spread out a little more, it wouldn't really kill them. 
So you have to you have to waste like uh, you know well I, I don't know if waste is the right word. You have to use quite a few shells to even uh, to even like kill like a decent sized base. Whereas like with this, you can just run through it. Now, of course, granted, you have to be here to do that, where with the artillery, you can just do it from wherever. Wow, for real? Oh, there's a, oh, that's a, that's a decent, a decent sized base over there. We have, like, no coal either. Um, <laughs> this isn't going to last long. We're going to have to start burning wood. Wood power tank, let's go. You know, so you can load this thing up with tank shells, ammo. Like I said, it gives a uh, bonus damage to ammo. Uh, when you shoot from the tank. Even a flamethrower. The flamethrower in the tank. Oh, that is so cool. I'm going to have to show you guys that uh, at some point. It's really, really nice for clearing forests. Because if you get the flamethrower damage, they'll just clear the trees like before you even hit them. Essentially like a bulldozer, but with, with fire. <laughs> so, I'm just doing this to demonstrate how it's like... I mean, this tank has 2,000 health. And uh, they no longer show resistances, which is a bit frustrating. But... Um, it has really, really good resistance, as you can see here. I mean, it's like hardly denting anything. Now, of course, it doesn't self-heal like my shields do. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if we, we could put some roboports in even and have it, have it do that. Now, the other advantage to this is I'm actually allowing more power for my lasers because I'm not having to recharge my shields or power my exoskeletons. And some of these bases, I'm just literally just running over, but... Boom, that easy. <laughs> you know, it got down a little bit, but... So we could have a roboport and construction bots and repair it. Uh, the, the problem with that, though, is that the construction bots are going to get killed by the biters if they're flying around trying to repair while you're uh, while you're fighting the biters. Um, we could clear this one up top and then grab this one down below and kind of just clear these out. And I guess this is kind of a good answer and demonstration uh i had quite a few questions over the last several episodes about like i'm not getting attacked are you on peaceful mode or something and uh, i think i mentioned this in one of the first episodes but it's definitely worth reiterating uh that biter attacks do not trigger unless your pollution is covering their bases so the reason i haven't really been getting attacked much at all is because i've been pretty proactive uh quite largely thanks to Mansuri who came in and helped, but uh, even in addition to that, uh, I've been pretty proactive in, in clearing out the bases, like you can see here. I mean, there's no bases. I mean, this one's almost in pollution. There's none really in pollution here. The only one that really is is this one. So, I mean, this one's going to be soon, but that's why we're not getting attacked, because if our pollution is not hitting the bases, th there are no attacks triggered, period. Like, they're just never going to attack us if our pollution is not hitting their bases so uh, i mean unless of course we like go build something right next to their base but uh so that's the reason behind that it, you know we're obviously definitely not on peaceful if we were these guys wouldn't even be attacking us until we shot them first but uh but yeah also i have turned off in the map settings when you first generate there's an option to turn off expansion uh, i have done that so what that means is the bases will not they will not go build new bases because I find that just way too grindy and tiring. Like, I enjoy fighting biters, I enjoy clearing out territory, but what I don't enjoy is just having them constantly encroaching on my base when when I'm not intentionally playing a death world. You know, if I'm intentionally playing a death world, I probably have it on. But, you know, we're trying to build a mega base here, and uh, having having biters just constantly expanding into our territory is uh, gets old pretty fast. So I have turned that off, which helps, because, you know, it's like, you know, th th they're not going to expand into here ever um of course our pollution is going to continue to expand out and hit more but it's it's they're not going to go into our pollution themselves so that does help but, uh, but yeah so if you're having problems with attacks like and, and it's being very costly to defend then definitely worth if, if you have the resources and means to do so to go on the offensive and just clear out any bases that are in your pollution range and uh, you know even preferably a, a bit farther out than that and, uh, and then the attacks should stop because, you know, in some situations, and I experienced this when I first started playing, uh, when you're kind of new to the game and you're getting attacked a lot, it's actually really hectic and <laughs> it's, uh, it's really straining and really resource intensive. I mean, I remember my first game, I don't even know how many resources I put into my defense. And I mean, that's, I mean, it's fun to do, right? It's kind of cool. 
So, you know, if you're into that, then, then definitely, you know, leave things be. But, you know, I remember, like, they would constantly break into my walls and kill my power, and then I have to rebuild it. And, uh, why are you, uh, what, what, are, you, what, are, you, what are you doing, buddy? Oh, that's because I didn't put signals here. This is a good example. Um, you should put signals on your main line. <laughs> uh, I, I forgot because normally I use a blueprint, so doing it by hand I kind of forgot. But the reason he was stopped here this whole time is because he had to wait for this train to go all the way in because there's no signals here, right? So from like this signal, turn this off, from this signal all the way down is an entire block. So until this train actually got way over here, um, it didn't, it considered it still be like occupied down that whole rail. So putting signals every so often on your main line is a really good idea, which I will do uh, off camera. But yeah, so anyway, it's like, you know, when, when you're trying to defend it, especially if you're using gun turrets, like refilling all those turrets, repair packs for them, repairing your walls, more walls, it's uh, it's very, very resource intensive and can be very time consuming until you get robots. It, uh, and I'm heading down to this other base, by the way. This wood power tank is uh, certainly not getting us there too fast. In fact, it's burning through all the wood. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, you know, uh, before you get bots, it, it's super time consuming. Like it can get to the point, I've had it before, where I can't even work on my base because I am constantly trying to like run around defending stuff, repairing stuff, and, but really? Okay, well, yeah, good thing we're heading down there. These guys, these guys ain't gonna make it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, you know, definitely worth sometimes going on the offensive if you think you can handle it. And, you know, turret creep, totally op an option. A tank, I actually got the tank really late. I mean, it really wasn't that expensive. It's just red, green, and military, I believe, or maybe it was oh, blue as well. But, uh, you know, you can get it, you know, not too late in. So the tank is a very viable option. You know, get you could get some tank shells if you want. Uh, they're not too complicated. Getting some, uh, getting some like ammo, piercing ammo in this thing, uh, is it, it would be really good. I mean, as you saw, you you can just run over the bases too. Like, <laughs> you don't even need ammo. You could just run over everything. Um, it does damage the tank quite a bit, but. Now the flamethrower, I will mention, is not great against biters uh, in the tank. I've never had much luck with it. I prefer the ammo and cannon shells a lot more. So this is going to do some damage to us. Uh, there's a lot of worms here, but even so, I'm just going to sit here. Dead. I, I love the <laughs> the trail of guts like everywhere I've driven. To <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's really, really cool. Just like the trail of bodies. Uh, and that should pretty much clear... There's some really nice... Wow. 7,800, 4,000. Really, really nice oil out here. Uh, these guys are about to be in our pollution, as are they. Uh, but I think that's probably been demonstration enough. We're at 23 minutes. It's a bit shorter than normal. Hopefully, I, hopefully I'll be feeling better by this weekend. And I uh, can do, you know, some more productive stuff. And, you know, more normal length episodes. And, and also, my other games, like they are billions, I am definitely not forgetting that. I just, you know, I, I have not had the energy to do anything except these, uh, these Factorio videos. So, I will get back to that as well, guys. Thank you for understanding and sticking with me, even though uh, the content's gone down a little bit. Definitely plan to pick it back up, but I think that's going to do it. I hope you enjoyed the little, uh, you know, different session demonstration with the laser defense and tank and such. If you have any questions or comments, uh, you know, strategies leave them down below for sure i'm always interested in new combat strategies and uh maybe we'll help some other people too but until next time i look forward to seeing you all and do take care